Hello and welcome to this Design Cuts video tutorial. Today we're going to look at recolouring simple art here in Photoshop. Now the art that I'm using is from one of our designer packs. So let's have a quick look. It's from Wild Flora Wonders, which are floral vectors by Denise Ann. And included in this floral vector pack are some ping images. And of course, ping images are bitmap images. So that's the one that I've got open here in Photoshop. And being a ping image, this image actually came with transparency. So all I've done is added a white filled layer below it, just so it's easier to see the art. But if the image had come with a white background, the process for recolouring it would be the same. Now we're going to look at three different ways of recolouring art in Photoshop. There are more, but we're just going to stick with three for today. So I have my art selected and the first thing I need to do is to select the bits that I want to recolour, given that I don't want to recolour absolutely everything. And to do this, I'll choose Select and then I'll choose Colour Range because this allows me to select by colour range. So I'm going to start by choosing sampled colours here because I want to be able to click on the colours that I want to use. I'm also going to click on this eyedropper here which will allow me to select a colour and anything else that is currently selected will be deselected. So I'm going to choose this colour here so I'll click on it once with the eyedrop and you can see that now we have it selected here in this image. So this is giving us a preview of what we've selected. It doesn't look like this colour has been selected, so I'm going to need to add it. To add this colour to the selection, I'm going here to the eyedropper that has a plus sign and that allows me to add this to it as well. You can see when I do that these other elements are all selected, but this one isn't. We're not seeing this one selected. That's good because it's not supposed to be. Now I also have settings here that are really important. I have localized color clusters disabled because I want to select all the areas that are this color in the image. And I have fuzziness set to zero. The further I increase fuzziness, the more I'm going to bring in colors that are similar to, but not exactly this color. Now, because I want to select and just recolor exactly this color, I'm going to make sure that fuzziness is set to a really low value. I don't want to pick up extra colors. Once I've satisfied myself in this little image here that pretty much what I want to recolor has been selected, I'll click OK. And these areas are now selected. You can see the marching ants around them. To recolor them, I'm going to use an adjustment layer. And because these areas are selected, when I select an adjustment layer, these are going to be part of the mask. So they're going to be masked. So the adjustment layer is only going to affect the areas I currently have selected. So I'll do this by choosing layer and then new adjustment layer. And for this one, I'll choose hue saturation. That's one of the colorization methods that you can use. It's a pretty easy one to use. I'll click OK. Now, although you can't see the marching ants any longer, only these green, sort of olivey green areas are going to be adjusted when we start working with the hue saturation sliders. Here we have a hue slider and if we walk this in any direction, you'll see that as we move it, the color of these leaves is changing. And so we can walk all the way around the color wheel. So I'm going to go close to the color that I want to use and I want a sort of blue color. So let's go and see where I can get my blues. I'm going to get my blues at this end of the hue slider and they'll also be at the other end of the hue slider because you can think of this as being sort of a circle that's been cut and then flattened. So they're going to join up at either end. So your blues are going to be at both ends of the slider. So just going to work out where the blue is that you want. You can adjust the saturation, remove saturation so it becomes more grayscale, increase the saturation so it becomes a whole lot brighter. And there's also a lightness adjustment here. So just choose the color that you want. If we go back to the layers palette, not surprisingly, here we have our hue saturation adjustment layer. And this is our mask. It's just controlling the area to which this hue saturation adjustment is being applied. One of the benefits of using an adjustment layer rather than fixing the change to the image is you can double click on it at any time and then come back in and make adjustments. 
Now we'll look at a second way of making the color adjustments. I'm going back to the main image. I'm going to select a different color this time. So again, I'll go into select and then color range. I'm choosing sample colors. I don't want localized color clusters selected. I'm choosing to have fuzziness set to really low value. I'm going to click here to replace any current selection with the color that I'm about to select. I'm going to select this sort of bluey green, this dark blue green. So I'll click on it and then just double check that all the areas that are this color in the image have been selected and appear selected here in this preview. And it looks like everything has been selected. If I needed to add another area, I would go to this icon here, the eyedropper with the plus sign and then I could add additional areas such as a different color. Now, I don't want to do that so I'll press Control or Command Z to undo that step. So I have selected now everything that I want to recolor. I'll click OK and now it's selected. You've got the marching ants showing. This time we'll do a curves adjustment. Again, an adjustment layer so that the areas that have marching ants around them are about to become a mask layer, new adjustment layer, and I'll choose curves. I'll click OK. Now with the curves adjustment, we can adjust the composite channel RGMB, or we can adjust individual channels. So looking here at this leaf, it's probably got some blue in it, it's probably got some green in it. So let's go and adjust the green channel. So we'll go to the green channel. When we're adjusting the green channel, dragging up will add green, and dragging down will add the opposite of green, and the opposite of green is magenta. So if we drag down, we're going to add magenta, Enter. If we drag up, we're going to add green. And so we can adjust the greenness of this particular element. So I'm going to take it towards the sort of magenta level. We can also go to the blue channel. In the blue channel, we'll be adjusting the blue in this color as well as the yellow because blue and yellow are opposites. We'll drag upwards to add blue and downwards to add yellow. And so you can fine tune the look of this color by adjusting the amount of blue or yellow in it. And with red, which is the final channel that we can adjust, we'll drag upwards to add red and downwards to add cyan. So here's red being added to this color and here it would be cyan being added to this color, cyan being that sort of bluey green color. So I'm gonna add a little bit of red here. I'll close down the curves adjustment. Let's have a look in the layers palette to see what we've got. Well, we've got two adjustments now. The hue saturation adjustment, which is controlling these leaves here. We can test it, turn it on and off to see how it's been applied. And then we've got the curves adjustment, which is controlling these leaves here. Now the third way of adjusting color is one that's actually set into the image itself, but it does have a distinct advantage and I'm going to show you that. So I'm going to select the image and this time I'm going to choose image and adjustments and then replace color. Now replace color is one of the few adjustments that is not also available as an adjustment layer. So the only way that you can use this replace color adjustment is to do it to the whole image. You can't actually do it as an adjustment layer. There are a few others that are the same, but this is one of them. So I'm going to click on replace color. And when I do that, you'll see that the replace color dialog looks very similar to the select color range dialog. So let's have a look and see how we're going to work this. It's going to work very similarly. So disable local color clusters. We've got our three little eyedroppers up here. I'm going to click on this one. So whatever I'm about to click on is going to replace anything that is selected here. And so what I'm going to do is grab this color here. Now it looks at this stage as if that color is not in use anywhere else, but I would like to replace some of these other colors that are pretty similar to it. So let's click here on the add to sample eyedropper. And now I can click on some other colors that are similar, but not exactly the same. So I'm just going to click on those. And if I want to click on these, I can add them as well. So I've bought in this color because it's similar to one of the others that I've already clicked on. 
So that allocates this sort of color as being the color that we're about to replace. And down here we can select the color that we want to replace it with. Now there is an advantage to this particular replace color option and that is that we can set the color ourselves. So not only do we have a hue, saturation and lightness slider which would allow us to do the things that we're used to doing with the hue, saturation adjustment layer, but we can also click on this result color which allows us to select it from the color picker. But we probably already know too that when we have the color picker open we can select the color from the image. So in this way we would be able to replace this sort of pink color with another color that we sample from the image. Or we could have actually provided a little color sampler box here that we want to recolor to and so we could have just clicked on it. So I'm just going to click here on this color and that would replace the pink color with this green color and I could select any color in the image to replace that color with. As well of course as creating my own color so I can just make an adjustment here and choose my own color for these flowers and click OK. I'll click OK again. Now the only thing to be aware of that particular adjustment is that it's baked into the image because it can't be applied as an adjustment layer. It's not able to be easily undone. So there are some of the approaches that you could take to recolouring simple art like this, art that has very distinct individual colours in it in Photoshop. I hope that you've enjoyed learning these Photoshop techniques. Let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley for Design Cuts.